Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the spectacular Greenland and Nunavut Arctic Cruise webinar. My name is Sandra Reimer and I work with Tour Imagination on their communication. Tour Imagination helps people of faith explore, experience, and expand their worlds. Today we have the privilege of having a itinerary expert, Martin Aldridge, with us. Before I introduce Martin, I want to tell you a little bit more about how the webinar is going to work. Martin's going to give his presentation telling us about the Greenland and Nunavut Arctic Cruise coming up in August 2020. Then he's going to spend a short time telling us about another tour coming up in January 2021, which goes to the other side of the world, Antarctica. Um, and after he makes his presentation, there'll be time for questions. Now, throughout the presentation, you can be typing your questions into the attendee chat, which is at the bottom of your screen. And then I'll come back after the presentation, read the questions, and Martin will answer them. Now, I'm going to introduce Martin. Martin Aldridge is a business development manager and expedition guide with Adventure Canada. In the last four years, he has guided 13 expeditions. Martin is also a yoga instructor, gardener, and he loves to travel. He's already been to more than 50 countries, and I understand that tomorrow he is going to Chile for the first time. So welcome, Martin. Thank you, Sandra. Nice to see you guys. Uh, nice to meet you all, and I hope you uh, enjoy our webinar today. We're going to dive right in. So I'm just saying hello for now, and I'll be back at the end of the presentation. So let's dive in here. Okay. So uh, I even wore the same shirt so that you know that that's me. Uh, I'm Martin and I'm an itinerary expert. Uh, I've been on board a number of the different expeditions and I have to say uh, this uh, spectacular Greenland and uh, Nunavut trip is a fantastic, fantastic trip. So let's dive in. We're gonna be on board of an expedition vessel. This will be a, an ice class uh, ship called the Ocean Endeavor, which is going to allow us to get into these ice strewn waters of the Northwest Passage. So here you can see the Ocean Endeavor, 190 passenger capacity, and we have 20 Zodiacs on board. So you can see one of those Zodiacs on the bottom left. Those Zodiacs are our means of transportation from the ship to the shore. And we're always, of course, using those Zodiacs for our wildlife viewing. So when we want to get up and close and personal to those cute and cuddly uh, white polar bears. So here's the, the overview map again of our Greenland and the Arctic cruise. This is a 12-day uh, expedition. I consider it a mini Northwest Passage trip as it is going to be entering into Lancaster Sound, which is really the beginning of the Northwest Passage. So I'm going to take you through a, a, a few of the different highlights. I'll show you some of my photos that I've taken over the last uh, four years. I've been on board of this trip every summer for the last four years, which is a, an incredible privilege. Uh, and so I'm excited to share my photos and uh, a little bit more information about this trip. So one of the big uh, parts of, a, um, of an expedition cruise will be our expedition landing. So we'll cater to all different mobility levels. Uh, we'll be heading off of the ship using those Zodiacs, and we'll offer a number of different levels of intensity, anywhere from a few hundred meters, uh, just an amble uh, around the, the landing site, up to 10 or more kilometers of a, of a hike. And we'll have a few different options in between. We also offer expedition landing excursions that are theme-based, so you could go off with our with our photographer. You could join our journalists or our authors for a storytelling um, group. Lots of different options when you're on board. We have Zodiac Cruises. This is where we will be obviously heading out in the Zodiacs for the duration of the excursion. You're going to be looking for wildlife uh, and it's also a great way to get up close and personal to some nice big icebergs. We visit communities along the way and we hire local guides in the community, so you'll be uh, toured around in the community, the communities that you visit by the people who actually live in this community. It's a really great way to have a more intimate and more personal experience in a community. 
you'll receive an expedition expedition jacket on board. So that's yours to keep when you uh, return back home. And it is an insulated waterproof layer, uh, great for this type of travel. We also have a Nikon camera share program on board. This allows you to bore out Nikon camera and cameras and lenses free of charge. We'll have lots of presentations and workshops on board. You really will never uh, be bored when you're, you're traveling. Uh, you're going to have uh, cultural demonstrations, scientific um, talks about archaeology. Uh, we'll hear about um, uh, different marine biology as well as uh, ornithology, looking at the birds. Uh, we, we talk about plants, uh, what, you, what you're going to find on the tundra. Uh, and of course, all those workshops as well, whether it's beading or making your own Arctic print. There's a lot of, lot of other amenities on board the ship. You can enjoy the hot tub. There's two saunas. We have daily yoga classes. Unfortunately, the picture here, I'm not leading that class. But if I'm on board next year with you, I will be leading the yoga classes. We also have three meals a day included in the cost of the expedition. And I should mention those excursions are included as well. So this trip runs from west to east. It's 12 days and it's right in the, the high season of the Arctic uh, summer. So we're gonna have 24 hours of sunlight or very close to it for the duration, which is really spectacular. And we do really dive right in with this trip because we start in Resolute. We'll be flying to Resolute on a charter flight from Ottawa. So I guess technically I should say this trip starts in Ottawa, but the actual expedition cruise is gonna start in Resolute. Resolute is in Lancaster Sound. It's at 76 degrees north, so quite far up there. Uh, and this will be our jumping off point. So we're going to go from the charter flight, we'll be transferred uh, to the shore, and from the shore we'll be going out to the ocean endeavor. I know that these zodiacs are going the opposite direction, but you'll be heading out from the shore to the ocean endeavor. Our first stop the next day will be going to a historic site in which is called Beachy Island. Beachy Island is famous for uh, being the first place that the uh, HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror, uh, Sir John Franklin's two ships, uh, first overwintered here. And this is the only location they found for a very long time. Uh, they were here in 1845. It wasn't until about 2015 that they actually found those two expedition vessels. But we've, we'll be visiting this site. You can see um, the graves of three of the sailors that perished on that expedition and a subsequent uh, uh, sailor who perished on a, a rescue mission for the Erebus. You can see um, all of the uh, can cans, which are from the food they were eating. This was modern technology at the time, tinned beans, um, which actually might have been part of their demise, in fact. Sometimes you go to Beachy Island and you go there for the history, history and the historical site and sometimes you have beluga whales off the south end of the island and we change our plan and that's what happened. Uh, this is from last summer um, and uh, you can see we had about uh, 60 beluga whales all in and around our zodiacs for about two and a half hours. It was really spectacular. So as we head along from Beachy Island through Lancaster Sound, we're going to the largest uninhabited island in the world called Devon Island. And on Devon Island, there's a couple locations that we're going to stop. The first that I'm gonna talk about is Croker Bay. Croker Bay, uh, as you can see pictured here, has a, a tidewater glacier, which you can see in the background, and I'll just do a little zoom in. Uh, along the way, as we enter into uh, Croker Bay, we have the possibility of seeing walrus here. Always uh, a welcome sight, although they are a little bit stinky. Uh, here's the uh, Tidewater Glacier. Uh, so we'll have a Zodiac cruise along the fa face of the glacier. This is also often where we do our uh, polar plunge, so you can have the opportunity to jump into the Arctic Ocean here. Sometime uh, you can also join our kayak program. This is at an additional cost. Uh, this is uh, available for 12 passengers. Uh, you do have to sign up in advance, but we have an, uh, a kayak guide as well. So you can certainly inquire about that. It's a really great way to uh, have a, an even more unique visit to Croker Bay. As we were leaving Croker Bay this last summer, we had a spotting of a polar bear. As we approached, we saw two extra set of eyes. And as we approached a little further, there were actually three bears. Uh, so we had a mom and two cubs. Anytime you typically see a polar bear with, uh, with another polar bear, it's normally a mother with her young. Uh, these are one and a half year old. Uh, polar bears um, based on the, the timing that we saw them uh, and uh, typically the young will be with their mother until about two and a half years and then they're off on their own. 
They're incredible, incredible beings, some of the largest land predators uh, and the apex predators on land, in fact, although they live most of their life on ice. As we head further along, we'll go to another historic site. This is a place called Dundas Harbor, on, also on um, uh, Devon Island. This was formerly a uh, Hudson's Bay Company trading post, and then it turned into an RCMP outpost to establish a presence in the Arctic. Uh, and so you can actually walk into these buildings as uh, part of our expedition, and you can explore, see what it looks like, see what it would have been like to overwinter here. Uh, the RCMP officers spent two years at this site. I can't even imagine. We visit there in the summer, uh, and I've had snow here <laughs> in the summertime. So I can't imagine what it's like with no sunlight in the middle of the winter. We cross Lancaster Sound for our next uh, stop. We're going to be going into the community of Pond Inlet. Uh, Bylet Island, which you can see pictured there on the screen, uh, just north of Pond Inlet is where Sermalik National Park is found. This is a uh, really beautiful park, has spectacular high peaks. And we also have a large concentration of uh, beluga whales, as well as narwhal and polar bears in this area. So actually, as we approached this last summer, we had a spotting in Navy Board Inlet as we headed south past Bylet Island to Pond Inlet. And we had a mom and two two and a half year old cubs and they were feeding on the ice there um, and they were feeding on a seal that they had caught. As we head into Pond Inlet, again, we'll have local guides take us around their community. We'll have cultural demonstrations. You'll see throat singing and drum dancing. You have the opportunity to buy art, arts and crafts from the locals. It's a great way to support the community further. And as I mentioned, you're going to have uh, a cultural demonstration. So you may even get to try some uh, dried Arctic char, or maybe some mukta, which is the skin of uh, beluga whale uh, or narwhal. Uh, this is where the uh, Inuit people find all of the vitamin C in their diet, as they don't have uh, citrus plants growing in the Arctic at all. As we head out upon inlet, we're going to be uh, hopefully having at least a day in the coast of Baffin Island. So we'll be stopping into the fjord systems here, as you can see pictured. Really, really uh, incredible peaks. You have the opportunity to see some of the icebergs that have uh, been calved off in Greenland. The, those icebergs head north, and then they start to bump along the coast of Baffin Island, the coast of Labrador, before they're kicked out into the Atlantic near Newfoundland. So the currents are actually what take them north from Greenland and over to Canada and then south from there. All different kinds of shapes and sizes, and if you're lucky, you might even get to see one roll over or, or break apart. And you can do that from the comfort of the viewing decks all over the ocean endeavor. We have a day at sea as we cross from Baffin Island over to Greenland. This will take about 24 hours. We'll typically leave right around, um, right around dinner time, and then we all arrive late in the day the next day. So we won't actually have an excursion for that day at sea, but when we arrive to Greenland, we will be getting off the ship. Greenland is a, another beautiful, beautiful area. Uh, very colorful communities, and the first community that we'll visit will be Alulasat. I'm going to talk about Alulasat in just a second, but you'll notice that the line goes across the screen a little bit north of Alulasat. This is where we have a planned expedition landing. So as I mentioned, expedition landings were, are where we get off of the ship, and we go for a variety of different hikes. Lots of different uh, uh, mobility, um, mobility levels will be catered to, so don't worry about that. We have hiking poles you can borrow on board. Um, but this will be an expedition landing, and I can't tell you where it's going to be because we always try to do a new location every year. Uh, for our expedition landing. So this will be a unique place that perhaps uh, no one has been for a very long time or very few people have ever visited. As we uh, start to talk about Alulasat here, Alulasat is uh, the second largest community in Greenland after the capital Nuuk. It also has a UNESCO World Heritage Site here. And this UNESCO World Heritage Site is Jakobshavn Glacier. And Jakobshavn Glacier uh, is the place that most likely those icebergs you're going to be seeing for the duration of your trip 
and that's where they came from. 90% of the icebergs that are formed uh, from Greenland and go into the Atlantic are formed out of a Lula set. So it's a very fast moving glacier. It's pushing out a massive, massive, almost unfathomable amount of ice every summer. And imagine, just imagine it's only in the summertime for about four or five months while it's still warm enough. So we'll be doing a Zodiac cruise here, as well as a visit into the community where you can hike up to the UNESCO site. Uh, it is about a kilometer and a half through the community up to the UNESCO site, but it is spectacular, uh, as you can see by the, uh, the prior photo. When we do our Zodiac cruise, this is a great place to see humpback whales that feed here on the nutrient-rich waters at the base of these icebergs that are all sitting on a moraine. At the, they're actually about 45 kilometers from the glacier. So they're calving off and there's an incredible amount of icebergs that are all moving their way down the fjord. They, they all stick on this moraine and that's where we do our Zodiac cr uh, cruise around all of the icebergs at the mouth of the fjord there. Another community that we will visit uh, is Sisimute. Sisimute is another very beautiful, colorful community. We'll have local guides take us around here. Um, we have a really great chance to understand a little bit more about the differences between the Canadian Arctic, the communities there, and the, Can and the Greenlandic Arctic communities. Uh, really the difference between how the, the Canadian government is supporting and versus the, uh, the Danish government who supports uh, the Greenlandic communities. So you'll learn a lot. You'll see the differences, especially right away in terms of the color. Greenlandic communities are very, very colorful. You'll see how Greenlandic people live, how they dry their Arctic char. And then that's our last day in Sisimute before we head up the coast of Kang, uh, up, sorry, up the fjord of Sonderstrom Fjord towards Kangerlussuaq. Kangerlussuaq has uh, a long airstrip there. This is where we're able to then fly out and we take a charter flight uh, from Kangerlussuaq down to Toronto. So that brings us round trip from Ottawa up to Resolute, 12 days really through Lancaster Sound, that opening to the Northwest Passage, across uh, the Davis Strait or um, uh, Baffin Bay. In fact, it's actually called Baffin Bay, uh, where we cross over. We visit the coast of Greenland, and then we fly from Kangalusuak down to Toronto. Full circle. All right. It's a really great, great trip. I highly recommend getting up to the Arctic, and this is one of the best ways to see all of the highlights of that Northwest Passage. So I hope you can join us and come for a cruise in Alulasat and visit the Canadian communities. The, uh, the trip is actually currently on early booking. Uh, so if you'd like to book early and save 15%, you can do so until October 31st. Uh, so about two weeks to save 15% on the first cost of that expedition. Okay. I'm just going to touch briefly on the Land of Penguins. So this is our Antarctic adventure. If you'd like to do both, you will be bipolar. You will have gone to both poles. Uh, bad joke, but uh, hopefully a couple of you liked it. <laughs> um, this trip will start in Ushuaia. This will also be on the Ocean Endeavor. Uh, this will be uh, starting in Ushuaia with a hotel night there. You'll have a day in Ushuaia the next day, and then on day two, about midday, we're going to head off on the Ocean Endeavour across the Drake Passage, the renowned Drake Passage. Uh, this body of water can be completely calm, flat, and uh, a joy to cross, and it can also have some of the roughest sea in the world. So certainly uh, be prepared for that. It is very important to prepare appropriately with uh, anything you might need for seasickness. So when we do actually cross the Drake Passage, we'll then get to the Antarctic Peninsula. We're going to be uh, crossing the Antarctic Circle. And then we'll also be visiting the South Shetland Islands. So 14 days uh, on board the Ocean Endeavour uh, and it, with that extra day prior in Ushuaia. So this is a picture of Ushuaia here. This is where we'll start, where we'll start and end our expedition. As we get down to Antarctica, we will have landings. These landings are also included in the cost of the expedition. You'll be heading out on Zodiacs, just as you did in the Arctic. 
And of course, we're looking for all of the different wildlife as well. So uh, we'll have some chin strap penguins, Adeli penguins, um, Gentoo penguins. We've got leopard seals, uh, all different number of species of whales, including uh, orca whales. Um, it's a really, really rich area for wildlife. So if you'd like to come to Antarctica, you can also join us on the Ocean Endeavor in January 2021. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview of the two expeditions, Spectacular Greenland and Nunavut, as well as Land of Penguins, uh, coming up this coming summer in 2020, as well as January 2021. So thanks for your attention, and we'll, we'll turn it over to questions now, and I'll come back on the screen. Hello, guys. Thanks for sticking with us. Yep. Thank you, Martin. That was excellent. Wow. You're welcome. Like a, two fabulous trips. Um, so if you have a question, uh, please just do type it into the bottom of the screen in the chat, and I will read those out. While people are gathering their thoughts. Uh, oh, we have somebody who said excellent presentation. So you're getting kudos already. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very happy or very, sorry, I should say very passionate about these expeditions. So I hope that came through. They're oh, really, sure. really spectacular trips. I had a question about um, why do glaciers produce icebergs in the summer? You mentioned that one spot um, where it just pushes out a whole bunch of uh, icebergs. Why does that happen? Yeah, the ice cap on top of Greenland is is pushing, putting pressure on the continent, and it's also pushing that ice down through the fjords. So they speed up as it warms up in the summertime, and so those um, icebergs are going to be calving off at the warmest time of the year. There is still movement in the winter, but it is going to be moving at something like 15 meters a day uh, during the summertime, uh, mm -hmm. and the actual amount of ice is something like 580 uh, trillion pounds of ice. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. 15 meters a day. So then is the movement observable? Um, we, you, it, it is possible to see a bit of the movement, but uh, it's about 40 kilometers up the fjord. Really what you're going to see and hear are the breaking up of the icebergs that have already calved off of the glacier. You're going to hear the large cracks as they break apart. Sometimes you don't actually see a physical movement, but you can hear the sound of them breaking apart. But then when, you're in our, when we're in the zodiacs, you're going to hear the crackle of the little air bubbles that are coming out of, um, you know, it could be 10,000 year old, 100,000 year old uh, air bubbles that are crackling and that air is coming out of those, um, place, uh, those icebergs. That's amazing. Definitely. Wow. And um, can you talk a little bit about the weather in the, that people will experience on the Arctic cruise in next summer? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it is the high summer. As I mentioned, you should have 24 hours of sunlight uh, at the beginning of the expedition and pretty well right the way through. Uh, that said, it is a little bit warmer uh, at that at this time of the year, pretty much the highest uh, temperature. So we'll be on an average of about 8 to 12 degrees Celsius, so about uh, 45 to 55 Fahrenheit. Uh, mm -hmm. I've had as warm as about 20, 22 degrees Celsius inland in Greenland. Uh, mm. And it's also been as low as, you know, just a few degrees above freezing. Um, and that is going to be, it's going to be a bit colder in Canada, especially around Baffin Island. And then Greenland will be a little bit warmer. But don't expect incredibly warm temperatures. <laughs> Definitely prepare lots of layers um, so that when you're out on the water, because you are on the Arctic Ocean, you're going to want to make sure you have layers and then you can always uh, you know strip down those layers as you're on the land right and as far as currency goes like a lot of these communities that people will be visiting they're very remote what how do people pay for like crafts for locals or food mm -hmm. or things like that yeah, very good question. In some of the larger communities, like in Alulasat and Sisimut, uh, credit cards are accepted at some of the, the stores oh. that you'd find there. Uh, probably one of the best ways, though, is to support the artists directly. Uh, they typically won't have a credit card machine. So in Canada, um, Canadian dollars, uh, when you're in Greenland, um, U.S. dollars would be accepted, but their main currency would be Danish kroner. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So if you'd like to pay in cash to support directly, um, mm. yeah, Danish kroner and um, Canadian dollars. But USD is always a good one to have because even probably in Canada, they would, you know, if they want to sell something, they would probably accept it as well. Okay, good to know. Um, yeah, I know Cheryl from Bonaventure Travels on the call with us, and she mentioned about the complimentary hotel in Ottawa. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, of course. It is uh, a Fairmont hotel. We'll be staying um, as a pre-night. Yeah, and that is the Chateau Laurier. So that is right by right by Parliament, and that the cost of that uh, hotel night is included. So it was actually we're we're covering the cost. So it's free for you, uh, and you would be staying there the night before. We always recommend to stay uh, a day before the trip ends and. Don't uh, have a, a quick uh, connecting flight out of Toronto when you're leaving because we may have delays with the ship, um, you know, maybe minor, but our charter flights will wait for us, whereas your commercial flights may not. Um, so definitely, yeah, definitely take that into consideration. Good to know. Now, somebody has a question about the um, accommodations on the ship. And I understand, oh, I just want to repeat for people that it's the same ship for both trips in the Arctic and Antarctica. So what you're saying will apply to both trips. Yeah, so there are uh, a number of different cabin categories. There, are, they, they are actually, it's the same ship. However, it is sold differently in the Arctic versus oh, the Antarctic, okay. just so you know. Um, so the question we, was about Antarctica. So maybe you can ca comment on that. Yeah, so um, there's about 165 cabins on board. Uh, there are 10 different cabin categories, uh, ranging from um, single cabins to, and interior cabins to exterior, uh, and then all the way up to suites and then forward-facing suites, uh, such as the captain's suite. Uh, they're all well-appointed. Uh, they all have their own private bathrooms. Um, there are TVs in all of the cabins, uh, which have a CCTV camera to the lounge. So you can stay in your, um, in your cabin if you'd like to relax, but still watch the presentations that are happening. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, yeah, it's a very comfortable ship. There are uh, lots of lounges, food's great as well. Does that help cover it? I think so. Any other questions that people have about accommodations, what the ship's like? Uh, what kind of things you might experience. Um, what about onboard activities as far as entertainment? I know mm -hmm. on other cruises, you can expect entertainment. Is that the case with the Endeavour as well? Yeah, so when we're in the Arctic, we will have uh, a large team of expedition guides and resource staff. So we, we have um, experts that are coming on specifically for this trip. So they're coming on for the one trip um, and they're going to do workshops and presentations throughout the day whenever we're repositioning. Uh, when we're on the land, they'll be doing talks on the land so you can join the ornithologist and look for birds uh, with them. Um, but you'll have a lot of um, a lot of a lot of things going on on the ship. In terms of entertainment, we'll always have uh, musicians on board as well. Um, we also have artists on board. Sometimes they're producing art live on the ship, maybe a picture or a painting. Um, it's not your typical mainstream cruise where you're going to have perhaps um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like burlesque dancers? Maybe that's not the right word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be much more appropriate to. The region that we're visiting. So. Okay, so Celine Dion's not going to be on the cruise or anything like that? No, um, no. <laughs> we have had uh, Arctic bands, so um, um, we have uh, a group from Iqaluit that has come on board in the past, so uh, they are regional. Yeah. Okay, they, that's they, good. They, yeah. Now, what, uh, someone's asking about food. Can you accommodate things like vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, that sort of thing? Yep, we can cater to all dietary needs except for kosher. Um, for vegetarian, uh, actually, let me just uh, describe the, the three different meals. Um, for breakfast and lunch, it will be served buffet style, and that's logistics to be able to eat quickly to then be off the ship as much as possible. We're trying to get off mm -hmm. the ship really every day. Uh, for our dinner, it is much more casual. It's uh, a la carte. There are three courses and there are four different options for each of the courses. And mm -hmm. for the main course, you will have an option of a vegetarian dish, a seafood, a meat, or a pasta dish. And if you need to go above and beyond that to 
change something, you are able to request special meals. Uh, my wife uh, works also for Adventure Canada, Canada, mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. is gluten intolerant. And there are tons of different options for lactose intolerance. We have soy milk uh, and um, no um, dairy option for the for the main meal as well. Okay, super. Okay, we've reached the end of our time. I'll give people just pause for a second in case somebody has any other questions. Uh, but if you have to go, we certainly understand. It is um, 1230 like we promised. Um, for those who want to stay on just a wee bit longer, Martin, can you share with us uh, a significant experience you had on one of your 13 expeditions? Maybe it was an encounter with a local person or a time when you, it was a special time when you saw an animal or a group of animals. Can you t tell us a, an experience you had? Yeah, um, I already touched on going to Beachy Island and we ended up um, seeing beluga whales. So um, that was an incredible experience. We had about two two hours, two and a half hours with um, yeah all of the beluga whales. They were circling around the Zodiac for the entire time. They were feeding because it's nutrient rich waters there around the ice. And um, what was really spectacular in that moment was the, I was actually not driving a Zodiac. Uh, we had one of the founding members of the company uh, driving the Zodiac that I was in. And he said, hey, Martin, tap on the side of the Zodiac. And I did so, just a little like knock on the door. And a, he said, beluga whales are very curious. They'll come and, and, and check you out. And I kid you not, within 20 seconds, a beluga whale came by and they have an articulating uh, skull. So they can actually turn their head and they turned its head and I saw one beady beluga whale eye looking up at me and <laughs> that's four feet away from me it was wow. yeah, literally breathtaking that sounds awesome huh. <laughs> so he got a look at you too maybe you guys were the ones in the zoo in this case <laughs> <laughs> totally we were definitely uh, in their waters for sure <laughs> yeah. Yeah. great well thank you so much today that's been really informative martin we really appreciate your time and Again, thank you everyone for joining us. We hope you can uh, come on one of these tours. And as Martin mentioned, in the next two weeks, there's still 15% off on the Arctic cruise. So if you sign up right away, then you get that benefit. Ooh, I thank should you. mention very quickly, yeah. sorry, the Antarctic uh, will be 20% off. I didn't mention oh. that. Yeah. Until when? When is Antarctic on? That will be till the end of November. Okay, super. I will put those details into an email to everyone who's attended or signed up from, for the webinar so that everyone will have that information repeated. Excellent. Great. Thanks again. Thanks, Bye now. Andrew. Thank you, everybody. Take care.